Welcome to another production of Candid Frank Live. Wasaga, Wasega, Candid Frank at the beach. This is a Candid Frank chat with the mayor, Brian Smith. We had a meeting to see um, what the future looks like uh, with beachfront. In a way, it was kind of a, a reset um, that you guys were creating. Was that the intention to make sure people understand the challenges that you have moving forward when it comes to the beachfront? Well, it was a whole lot of things, and, and, and you're absolutely right. In a way, it was a reset, and, and we say reset because we're not starting over. We're not going to go back and recreate the wheel here. Uh, we're not going to start this whole process that has now been you know, in, in the works for eight years, and we're still really no further ahead. Uh, Council uh, understands and knows and believes that we need to get things started and get things going so as that we are in the ground, we have concrete coming out of the ground, uh, and we're actually processing uh, uh, what needs to be done and, and moving it forward. And uh, we're all about that. So the RFP has been put out. We'll have those results back in June. Council will then have to make some decisions so as that we can do just that. And that is get this uh, project started uh, with the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus, so we're moving the town forward. It was also about making sure that the folks that were there, and it was a great crowd, I was a little concerned, I don't mind saying uh, up against the Leafs game, but uh, it was a great crowd, well over 500 people, and um, great questions. But it was about letting people know where we started in 2014, uh, and how we got to where we are today, and where we have to go from here. And helping people understand uh, a bit of the vision and why it is as it is, and the, the downtown master plan is still a huge part of what we're doing. Again, we're not creating the, the wheel. The province believed in it back in 2014-15, so much that they paid for the mass, vast majority of it, as did uh, some local uh, developer, uh, and uh, we're on our way now. So um, it was a great turnout, great questions, uh, and it was one of many. That was this a- council is all about being open and transparent and community engagement in the future of their community. And that's exactly what we'll do. There's concern, and, and, and you, you, you stated it clearly, that 4%, 4 point whatever, and 4 point whatever is split between, you know, the pandemic and natural rise in taxes. The other was for the arena and library. Uh, I, the, the beachfront right now, that was a key component for what you were going to do. Um, how now can you do what you're intending to do without that component downtown? And how does that affect uh, the beachfront moving forward? Well, when we look at the downtown, so if we look at the south side of the Main Street Bridge to Walmart, I would say Zoo Park Road now, uh, and then we look at our main beach area, they really are two very important areas in our community and they are tied closely together. I would argue uh, the same as uh, our CAO did uh, last week that Main Street portion of this development is probably as important, if not more important, as their beachfront. Why? Because it's the Main Street development that's going to serve our full-time residents year-round. And everything we do, we have to be doing uh, in favor of our full-time residents. We can't ignore tourism, and nor will we. Uh, tourism is the lifeblood of this community and our businesses. So we're absolutely focused on that. Uh, but while we're doing that, we're always keeping in mind what the full-time residents have to deal with uh, with tourism, uh, what they endure annually every year because of tourism, and how do we make life better first and foremost for our full-time residents. With respect to where the arena library is today versus where it would have been six, seven years ago, it's still close to the downtown. It's not in the downtown core. Uh, but we can work with that. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, good landowners um, along Main Street that I'm confident will work with the town uh, because they want this community to be a better place as well. And we've got enough, we own enough of the main beach area, 80%, that we, we don't need the uh, private landowners to, uh, to be part of it. Uh, but if they want to, we're happy to have them. And it's why we're shifting our focus uh, from beach area to right now uh, to, you know, basically First Street, the Dardanella area, the splash pad area. We own all the land. We can move forward. We can get things done relatively quickly while leaving the other parts uh, from Spruce Street to First Street, all those buildings intact until new things are built. And then we can worry about the old stuff and taking that down and replacing it. It's, it really is a focused effort on how we do things 
uh, in, the, in the step by step process so is that we keep things here for people to do in the summer and that we're creating a, a, an amazing downtown as we roll that out step by step for our full time residents. I have this image of driving down the road towards the beach. You know, all one has to do, you don't have to drive far, you go to Collingwood, you go down the main street, it's not one block, it's more than a block. Absolutely. You know, the, the thing to remember about Wasaga Beach versus Collingwood, our, uh, our good friends uh, to the west, and that is, uh, and, and they, I have to say, Collingwood uh, downtown, their main street is one of the most beautiful main streets in the world, in my opinion. I just love Collingwood's main street. Uh, but they've spent many, many years developing it. They've spent many, many years uh, revamping it. They have a great uh, BIA, uh, as we will in Wasaga Beach at some point, I'm sure, uh, that continuously work. I just read uh, this morning that the BIA is now looking to replace the Collingwood, the Seawood sign um, and uh, do some art uh, there now. Uh, they're constantly thinking about how to attract uh, um, residents and attract tourists not only for the first time, but keep them coming back. And that's the same, no different for Wasaga Beach. The difference with most communities versus Wasaga Beach is we're very, very linear, right? We are 16 kilometers of freshwater beach that runs basically from one end of our town to the other. And so it's not as easy to accomplish that downtown core, if you will. We have nodes and we're always going to have nodes and we're going to work on improving not only our downtown, but improving those nodes as we move forward as well. So is that residents in every area have at least something close to them of convenience and that they're willing and able to go to and use. But with any luck, we'll keep them coming uh, to our main street, supporting the businesses. Uh, you also heard um, uh, last Thursday night about our tax base and that we need to get to that 2575 uh, level. So is that residential taxes can be reduced uh, and we have enough business here that there's everything you need within the town of Wasaga Beach. It's not going to happen overnight. I, you heard me say it Thursday, if Rome was built in a day, we'd be hiring their contractor. Yeah. It's going to take time, it's going to take effort. We've just missed the best four years for development, real estate sales we'll ever see in our lifetime, probably in my opinion. Uh, and so it is what it is, but this council is uh, is focused and intent on making good things happen for the full-time citizens of Wasaga Beach first and foremost and our tourists second. So I wanted to talk to you about the immediate future. Um, you've laid out some plans and I've heard some great things um, and you can speak to every every one of them. We've got Beach Drive now, you opened it up. How happy are you that it's open? I've never seen it open so it was a, it was a shock to me to drive there and go wow this is awesome this is going to work. For someone who doesn't know, mm -hmm. I said this to you before when we did our last interview before before it got open. I said now you've got a way to, to advertise. People come see the beach now they go oh, maybe this is a nice place to set up so they they park their car and, and they stay. But when people are driving on Main Street and, and, and they see the beach in the distance they don't get the impression of all the people and activity which generally is the subject of what you and everybody else in this community wants. We want to have people from outside come here and enjoy the place. And how important is it to you that the Beach Drive opening and now you're going to start doing, tell us some of the, the wonderful things that you're doing on Beach Drive for today so that we can improve today, start today. Sure, so there's a couple of very important things you mentioned there. Uh, Frank, you said that uh, you don't want to go to Collingwood or to Barrie but you have to. Absolutely. And that's just the reality of where we're at today. We've got great business people and great businesses in the town of Wasaga Beach, but we don't have enough of those businesses to carry all the goods and services that we want and require. And so I've often said we don't leave town to shop because we want to, we do it because we have to. Government services, social services, those types of things, we don't have them here in Wasaga Beach. And the goal of of this council is to bring not only more business but those types of services as well. Um, what are we doing in the immediate future? A, uh, how happy am I that Beach Drive is open? I'm very happy that Beach Drive was open and, and you know throughout my campaign I heard it from countless people. Um, but I can tell you what's interesting to me is how people truly are happy that it's open because every other day minimum I still hear from someone whether it be an email, a phone call, a text, or on the street or at an event, thanking me and council for opening Beach Drive again. Uh, it's amazing how important that is to our community and to the people who live here full time. Because when it's quiet and the summer's over, 
That's when our full-time citizens really enjoy going down there, parking backwards, watching the sunset, watching the sun come up or just the waves come in, enjoying a coffee or a, an ice cream or whatever. And uh, it's very important. So uh, it's open. I'm very happy. It's going to remain open. It'll remain open uh, throughout the new plan. There'll be an opportunity to close it for events, uh, but it is going to be a roadway that is never closed um, on a permanent basis. So um, this summer, uh, we're doing quite a bit to reenact. I'm happy to say that um, all but one, and I think we're working on a deal on that, of our um, leases are uh, completed and, and businesses are leased out and will be open. Uh, we are spending um, great effort on um, programming uh, that area. Not only will we have programming uh, by the uh, Wayfinding Sign Wasaga, uh, which people just love, and that was a great addition by the last council, I must say. We may have to look at moving it a little bit uh, because of traffic, but we'll wait and see how that goes. Uh, so we'll be um, doing great events at that end, but we're also going to activate the other end um, at First uh, Street where uh, the Dard is uh, and the splash pad used to be. Uh, unfortunately, when they tore down the buildings there, they also tore out all of the uh, the guts that, the that services, made yep. and the services that made the splash pad work, which is so unfortunate, uh, but it is what it is. So we're going to enact that area. We're gonna put a small stage there. We're looking to bring food trucks in there seasonally uh, so as that uh, we can have entertainment and whatnot happening at that end of town as well, so or, or the beach as well. So we're really looking to improve. And I can tell you our special event staff, Candace and, and, uh, and he, uh, Lisa and Heather, that team is uh, brilliant. Uh, bright, bright young ladies who are doing a great job and have a lot to uh, on the go. And uh, this summer should be a fun and interesting summer. It'll start to build again as we go on. Beach drives open, businesses are going to be happier. I've talked to many of those people coming back who are ecstatic that Beach Drive is open because that traffic is uh, very important to them. And of course, the more traffic we drive on Beach Drive, the more traffic we drive through this community, the better it is for all our businesses. I heard before the election and when I got involved in, in putting, putting my opportunity to interview all the candidates and that, some people felt that I should get some more answers. And one of the things that I, not as a, someone running, but someone who was covering, one of the big things that they missed was uh, the market. They, you had a, I'm, I wasn't here, so I don't know, been here four years, right. but I miss, just missed that. You had a market there. Is there anything like that coming back? Because I know a lot of them really missed that. So, uh, so uh, it was called the Main Street Market. Uh, it was made up of, uh, I believe, 10 uh, kiosks. They were uh, retro looking trailers. Uh, that a, a local uh, a gentleman, uh, Gary Swatsky, who owns Skull Island, he's very talented, built them for us. Uh, and we had, uh, some of them had uh, food, some of them had art, uh, face painting, uh, the chamber at one point uh, was using one. Uh, and so it was a place for ice cream. Uh, and then the beach bar, uh, which is the Wasaga Beach Brewing Company was also uh, there. And uh, we activated that and it was a great spot and people loved it and enjoyed it. And uh, it's why when you now hear that the beach bar is coming back, people are very happy about that. We are not going to rebuild those structures. They were crushed and thrown in the garbage, unfortunately. Uh, even though um, they had been offered money for it, they chose to not take the dollars and put that into taxpayers' pocket. They wanted to just destroy them so they couldn't have them back. So it is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, um, the beach bar will be back uh, down at the beach in the old dome site, different location this time, but a better view overlooking the water. And they often have uh, entertainment there as well and karaoke nights, which I know a lot of people enjoy. Uh, and not just locals. The locals loved it, but um, the tourists loved it as well. And then uh, we'll have the food trucks at the other end. And that's where we're at for this year. Uh, it takes time to... Um, to do this stuff and so uh, we're doing everything we can for this summer and I'm quite happy with what staff have shown us that they're prepared for uh, and I think uh, as uh, next summer comes along staff will be soon starting to work on that you'll see even more would it be great to see an air show come back to Wasaga Beach a motorcycle rally those bigger events absolutely um, but we've also got our local organizations like the cruisers uh, and their car show will be happening uh, this summer um, the Corvette Club is coming up uh, with their uh, show. So 
uh, a lot of great events uh, that'll be occurring and uh, rest assured council uh, understands and believes that Wasaga Beach should be a fun place to be and we're going to make it so. On my way in uh, there were lineups, um, people activating their free passes. I said uh, I got this sense, I know this might be hard to believe, but I think the people who used to sell the tickets were happier than the people who were getting the tickets. They wanted to keep it, we're not paying, that's not twenty eight fifty anymore, it's for free. Absolutely. Tell us about the free passes and how important that is in your mind and why you did that. Well, well, you know, I, I put that idea forward a few weeks ago at council and it's an idea I put forward uh, the last time I was mayor and unfortunately council didn't support it uh, at the time, but uh, people have been asking for this for a long time. and. You know, I've uh, been uh, blessed and fortunate enough to do a lot of travel in my day. And uh, most communities I go to that are tourist hotspots, um, the, the residents that live there full time, uh, they get a break. They get a break at Disney. They get a break uh, for parking. They get, they get a break for many different things. And so uh, let's face it, tourism is our lifeblood. We want it. We need it. It's extremely important to us. And my, myself included, many people would say we love that tourism. We love that hustle and bustle. But two to three, four months of the year, it's a lot for people to deal with uh, that live here full time. And so why not do things that can, can give the locals a break? And so I put that forth in this council. Uh, council supported it uh, unanimously, wholeheartedly. And um, we've, in order to offset that funds, we're looking to increase parking uh, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, anyone other than a resident which I think uh, we're still going to be cheaper than most communities around us for parking. So I'm not too concerned uh, and neither are staff that that's going to have a negative effect on our tourism. Uh, but uh, it's a substantial increase uh, to the taxpayer and the taxpayer now gets free parking. And staff are ecstatic about it because staff now, uh, you know, get to deal with some of the pleasantries as opposed to some of the not pleasantries that they deal with uh, on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, I just want to put a shout out. A shout out to our staff because uh, they do they work hard and uh, they're, they're great people uh, I say it over and over they're the best of the best right from our our uh, clerks right up to our uh, general managers and uh, they care about the people of this town and how they feel and what they think and so when they can uh, have people come in and they can put a smile on their face that makes our staff that much happier and uh, kudos to them they do a great job um, for those that that follow CTV I have friends at TSN because I cover the Canadian Football League, so I know some people at TSN, and I also understand how network television works. They don't really have a lot of time on topics. Sometimes it's a little abbreviated. Um, uh, they abbreviated, I think, what the intention was of the provincial park when it comes to uh, basically booking your parking space. I'll say this because, I, I, I don't know, I, I think they just forgot the last part of the sentence. You reserve your tickets to your passes to make sure parking passes to make sure you have a parking spot if you're coming from miles and miles and kilometers and whatever away. So when you show up, you have a parking spot. They left it there. They they forgot to mention that that doesn't mean you can't go to see if there's parking. Would you speak to that? And we've had businesses call my office who said, "Hey, I've got people calling me who want to cancel their bookings because they can't. They don't think they can get on the beach." <laughs> Never mind into provincial park parking. So it's something that we're working with our friends at the province to uh, to uh, educate people more, and I'm happy to speak about it any time. So basically, they have put in in place a service uh, and a reservation service that they've had at other parks in the past, uh, and they've now put it out uh, amongst uh, across 20 parks, and Wasaga Beach being one of them. And that is that you know if you want to ensure you have a space if you're coming to the Wasaga Beach provincial park. Five days in advance, you can call and you can book that space. So when you get here, you're certain to have a place to park. However, if you get here and the park's not full or they haven't all been booked, they'll be happy to take your money and have you come in and park in those parking lots. They're still going to have park, uh, parking lot attendance. There'll still be uh, people manning those gates. Um, so it's not like you can't park if you haven't booked in advance. But if uh, the booking in advance, is the, the lot's full, it's full. Uh, so it, that, that's what that's about and, and, and again we're working well with the province. Uh, the province is our friend and uh, we want to do everything we can as a community uh, to work hand in hand in lockstep with not only the province but the federal government uh, because at the end of the day creating the town that we're trying to create here is going to take those partnerships. Um, and at the end of the day if you get there and there's no parking 
we'd be happy to have you in our town parking lots. So there, there you go. And and just so people understand, and uh, a simple fact is that only seven days a year, the provincial park is full. So there's a lot of other days beyond seven. So there's a good chance you'll be able to get your parking. Don't be discouraged about coming to Wasaga Beach because you're concerned about parking. That's a non-issue. We, there... we have a whole summer where you can't get parking in Wasaga Beach. That's gonna be a good summer. Thing. And if I really like you, I'll let you borrow. Oh, I'm not, maybe I'm not supposed to say that. Don't you can borrow that. my yeah. parking pass. <laughs> They're not transferable, I lied. Oh well, you never know. Um, so, so basically, is there anything else happening in May that I've not uh, highlighted for you? No, I think it's been a great chat. There's, uh, we could talk all day, I'm sure. There's a lot of great things happening in Wasaga Beach. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I just want to go back to the tax uh, increase of 8.6%. Uh, Listen, 8.6% is ugly no matter what. Uh, but we've got a lot of pressures. We've got a lot of increases, just as every residential owner is facing with hydro, with insurance, so on and so forth. Um, we have the arena library uh, that I am happy we, are, we have a new arena library. I wish we could have funded it differently, but we are where we're at. And uh, you'll hear us say this a lot. It's water under the bridge and uh, it's about moving forward. So I'm confident that as we move forward, you are not going to see out of this council 8.6% on an annual basis. I know that staff and council are already working and thinking about next year. Uh, so is that we can mitigate as much as possible, but the realities are what they are. Um, at the end of the day, uh, summer's almost here. We've got an amazing, beautiful community. We've got the longest freshwater beach in the world. Nobody else can have that, right? Absolutely. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing our residents out down at the Bean Beach this summer, enjoying it. And of course, as many tourists as we can possibly have. I touch just one more topic, please. Sure, you can do it. Okay. You want, well, okay. The, just the one more is the other thing I talked about. The marketing was a big thing. The market was a big deal. Also, the walk-in clinic. Um, where are we at with that? Yeah. So, uh, as you know, uh, my first term of council, we opened a, a walk-in clinic. Councillor Ron Eagle, uh, my friend, uh, who uh, has just passed, uh, unfortunately, his wife, Faye Eagle, is now part of this council. Uh, we opened a, uh, a walk-in clinic and uh, yes, there was a cost to that walk-in clinic uh, on a trial basis to, until we could build the numbers, but the numbers were uh, staggering, uh, very busy, and there's no doubt that would not have been a cost to taxpayers of Wasaga Beach for very long. But those are the types of costs, I believe, Frank, that taxpayers don't mind paying for if they don't have to wait in an emergency for eight or nine hours, and that's not a slight to emerge, they're busy. Uh, those people are, uh, are amazing people and doing a great job. Um, but there's a service every community should have. So this council is working, uh, talking with partners uh, uh, right now about uh, another walk-in clinic. We have a meeting this afternoon, as a matter of fact. And uh, as soon as we possibly can get a walk-in clinic, after-hours clinic opened in Wasaga Beach, uh, we'll do that absolutely very quickly. And, and it's going to take some funding. But we do have funding. We have this, fun, this, this special little place called a casino uh, here in Wasaga Beach that is really going to help this council uh, to do that. But with or without the casino, this council is intent on making sure that we provide everything we possibly can for our residents, and we're going to work to make that happen as quickly as possible. For Wasaga Wasaga, I'm Candid Frank at the beach. If you want to contact us by email, Email me at candidfrank at hotmail.com. Watch us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Candid Frank Stanishi 1030 or message me on Facebook at Candid Frank Stanishi for any ideas or comments you have about the program. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time.